and I mean, he's not here now, obviously. But he's been on board with He's been on board with everything that's up until. Who's Mike Ben? Mike, Mike, Mike Ben, who you just oh, said Mike, you was Michael on a big Benjamin, bridge with. Mike, Michael Benjamin uh, uh, is in favor. I, as a matter of fact, I have a drawing. You, you, don't, you don't know that, because Mike Ben's not here. I have a drawing that was given to me by South Fayette Township a month ago that was done by Mike Benton that very clearly indicated that he wanted four lanes to go from okay. Bridgeville to South Fayette. Excuse me. I, I don't want to debate this. No, I'm not debating with you. I don't want to debate You're talking about something that may or may have happened three or four years ago. I'm talking about Mike Benton before he passed away, what he was on board with. And, and so what what he might have thought three or four years ago isn't what he thinks now. Well, what he wrong, thought but I just talked from the township officials themselves. I got it about two months ago. Okay. All right, but anyway, let me make my point. Excuse me. Uh, if, if you see no value in having four three lanes going between the South Fayette Business District and the Bridgeman uh, Business District, we may, you're making a serious error. At the meeting, by the way, the PennDOT meeting, there was some reference made that uh, I suggested that this seven lane bridge be made eight lanes wide. So the two lanes to go from Bridgeman to South Fayette. And there were ten lanes. Make it ten lanes. Well, that, that's not very ridiculous, but anyway, <laughs> ten, ten. <laughs> when, is it, when does it not become ridiculous? When I hear a statement like yours, no, it was not the, 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 eight, the eighth lane was to be so that Bridgeville could have two consumer motor struts yeah. getting out of our time. We never made it. The, the late lane was, was never mentioned. I, 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 really okay. said, I mentioned it in personal letters and recommendations. Depend on, that's why it was brought up at the meeting. If you remember, at the meeting, the uh, presenter uh, said that. Uh, they considered the eight lane, but the uh, Army Corps of Engineers said doing that it would Who make considered it? Who cost. considered eight lanes? Who considered it? Uh, it, it was mentioned by someone. I mean, Not by PennDOT? Uh, oh, you know what? You might be right. <laughs> it wasn't for once. No, there, there, was a, wait, there was a reference made by the credit presenter that making the bridge wider would not be possible because it would cause uh, flood, potential flood. I disagree with the concept, but we'll see. Well, at any rate, what's your point? What's my, my point is I'll wrap it up. I think that you guys should make an attempt to have two lanes coming out of Bridgeville going into the South Bay Business District. I want to emphasize the fact what PennDOT has done, even though the bridge is seven lanes wide, they've taken both of the two downstream lanes made them exclusive only to go from uh, across the bridge right toward uh, I-79. Right. And incidentally, excuse me, these uh, will provide you some facts, all right? And one other thing, this is the, uh, this is a copy of the uh, uh, right to know records that I've submitted to the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Open Records for an explanation on why uh, a, a voicemail, my recording of pen buttons played here at this in this room. And this is likewise a copy of the, uh, the, the same application to the right of note department uh, that I'm sending the pen dot tomorrow. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, make sure you get it. Okay. Uh, Council recognizes Gail uh, Livingston. Just here's a concerned citizen just kind of asking kind of what the process is. That building was taken down on the corner of the block on the Walden Street. Um, there's a, I think it's a hazard right now. I mean, I understand that it takes some time for a process for, but I just wondering what the process is to eliminate that. I was talking about this before the meeting started. Yeah. The property owner, uh, but uh, we had a uh, conference call with the property owner um, the, the Monday after the building fell. Um, in, a, in actuality, I got to call him because he was supposed to have a fence around that area um, last week, and as of Friday, it was not there. Um, he has until May 31st, he has insurance, so he has until May 31st to remediate the site. After May 31st, then the borough of Bridgeville has to remediate the site um, to our specifications. 
and uh, then um, we'll move forward with for the cause that to occur. Right, for cause that to occur. So, um, but a fence um, has to be put up immediately, and we had had included that in our letter. So, but you, you, know, you may not see anything until the thirty first, but after that, we'll be on board and ready. Um, to have someone come in and do what they need to do. So all the debris will be taken out, the foundation will be taken out, there will be soil placed soil in. Soil placed back in it because the crawl is within a flood zone. No, uh, no uh, building debris is permitted to be used as backfill. And then once it's all backfilled and compacted, it has to be uh, seeded and mulched and grass can grow along there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, schools getting out and, you know, there's a lot of... A lot of potential for stuff. That is Thanks, Dale. Thank you. Uh, Council will recognize uh, Sandra Mollich. I'm just concerned about a couple issues on Ramsey Avenue. We still have two houses that have been vacant for eight years. And the one was that flooded house, so it hasn't been open. There's furniture and everything in there that's still. I'm assuming growing tons of mold. Um, that's what I was just talking about. I actually was just talking about that to um, council before we started the meeting. Victor Alston is the son of the gentleman that owned the house. Mm -hmm. And we have been back and forth um, because there's nobody to cite because the house is still in William Alston's name. <laughs> So um, I was sending correspondence to Victor and calling and trying to get some communication going. Well, I finally sent a little bit of a nasty letter saying, we need you to contact us and we need to go through the proper procedures here. Well, he actually did contact me. So he's making an appointment with our building inspector. What needs to happen is we know there has to be mold in there. Um, the building inspector needs to, he probably will go to the door and probably won't go in any further, but he needs to go up and see the condition right now. Mr. Alston thinks he's going to save the house. In, a, in our opinion, it's probably full of mold and will have to come down. I thought but, the second floor fell into the first floor. Not that I know of. Uh, the pictures that we have didn't show that. No. No, the yeah. ceilings were down. And that's all yeah. just speculation right now, if I can interview. Yeah. Okay. They're basically, they've gotten, you know, Okay, great. She's talked yeah. to us. So, and yeah, we, we, we have, have some, yeah, we have photos of what the house, you know. So anyway, they're making, they're getting together, and he's going to um, give him permission to look at the house. Probably what's going to happen, I'm speculating, is the house is then going to be officially condemned, which will mean that it will be boarded up and no one will be able to enter. From that point on, then um, we'll try to get Mr. Alston to take it down, but usually what happens with these things is then they become our problem. So we normally, um, we normally apply for funding through the county um, to demolish houses. What they've done now is, is they've cut the funding in half. They used to, they used to um, approve the 100% the of the amount to take the houses down. Now they now will only get 15%. So probably in the long run, if we can't do anything with Mr. Alston, we'll have to take the house down and then lean or do an injunction. If it does prove to be, uh, yeah, and we're constrained to constitutional rights and whatnot. In the meantime, then the house is buttoned up and secure. There's no external indicia that we have of an external threat right now. We're restrained and require to be buttoned up. Once the folks go in and they are going to consensually let them in instead of us having to go through the procedures to cause that to occur, they'll be able to basically get a solid, you know, inspection that gives them solid information on whether it's in any, because you don't take it down the house unless you prove definitively that it's beyond reproach. If that's proven definitively, then we'll proceed accordingly, either with the owners or otherwise is, is the reset. If okay. it's not documented, just to be advised, if it turns out, and then folks, we do speculate what we think the conclusion may be, that if it turns out that that house is not quote unquote demo worthy versus in need of a lot of rehab, but not certifiable to be demoed, then we're constrained only to have it caused to be buttoned up and secure pending the private work out of the property. Just 
So folks know, that's we're limited government, all of us, and that's kind of those for the church. Okay. I've, I've just, in passing, talked to a couple of people that live down at that end of the street, and when there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of smell, and whether they say that they've been getting sick more often, whether that is from that or not, but that house has got to have mold issues. Let me interject. At the very least. Based on personal knowledge, only coincidentally, because my sister happens to live directly across from that house, she's very much been well aware of, in fact, was out that her son was out with Mrs. Olsen across the street. They have looked, they would have been, Lori, no, my sister would have let them know if they had smelled anything, and they've got, we've gotten no smell odor complaints okay. from anybody else. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything. Okay. As far as odor complaints or anything like that, I've gotten high grass complaints, um, wow. that type of thing, but as far as any odors or anything coming from the house, okay. we just were tired of going back and forth, and I just couldn't get it to respond, and then by some... Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what made him. I guess, I, like I said, I just had to be a little more aggressive with my gloves. Okay, good. Um, the other thing I have is the water down by the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. We now have a family of ducks back there because there's so much water. Um, I don't know. We us? haven't had luck with the uh, railroad oh, yeah. cleaning up. Yeah, we need at least sprayed for the summer, but it would be nice if the railroad would dredge it. Um, we've requested that the railroad do, do something with that for years, but in, in really, in looking at how much property the railroad owns and probably how many, how much area they have, it's probably in the same condition as probably impossible for them. We certainly will go down and spray it. We have a certified uh, uh, plug guy okay. <laughs> that we can go down and spray it. So. All right, thank you. We want to that. Make sure the are right. Yeah. Right. You used to drive to the All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, minutes. Motion for a comment <coughs> the minutes of April 9, 2018, the regular meeting as submitted. Who's Gargucci? I'll second. And Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2018-04, motion to vote council regarding resolution number 2018-04 as per PennDOT requirements 1.10.14, signs and banners across state highways. Resolution designating the intention of the original work of one banner across State Route 50 to be installed May 16, 2018 and removes June 18, 2018 for original day on the Avenue celebration to be held June 16, 2018 from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. <coughs> Bruce Gargucci. Second. And Joe Plusno, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Bill list. Motion of uh, the Borough Commons regarding the May 2018 bill list. Please have Joe. Yeah. Joe Rucci. Second. So and Bruce Dalgerich. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payrolls. Motion of the Borough Council for the payrolls of May 18, 25th, and June 1st and 8th, 2018. Bruce Dalgerich. And DJ Watt. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Monthly reports. Motion to accept and pay any commission to the April 2018 Real Estate Tax Collector Report. All those in favor? Second. And BJ Bott, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the March 2018 Financial Report. All those in favor? Second. Joe Sockmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the April 2018 police report. So moved. Anderson? Sir. Ms. Calrucci, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the April 2018 zoning report. So moved. Bill Anderson? Second. Ms. Joe Cosmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Administration? Moved. Uh, finance. Joe Rucci. 
Uh, other than the uh, normal uh, expenses that we paid throughout the year, or throughout this past month, um, we uh, started paying a few of the expenses on the building, like the nice paint job in this room, as well as uh, uh, the concrete work that's going on in the, um, in the front. We also had to uh, uh, pay the, um, the insurance company, gave us the money for the scoreboard that was damaged last fall, and uh, we had to pay that bill, and thanks to the Public Works for helping the VA install uh, or in the process of installing those core boards. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, we collected $8,000 in past due taxes, but we still have 54,000 pending. So I'm sure the fun process is continuing on with the board's office. Uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Parks and Rec, Joe Bossman. Uh, parks are looking good with all the rain we've been having. They're all nice and green. People seem to be enjoying them. Uh, last month, Lori and I walked through all the parks, checking them out. They're in pretty good shape. We found some smaller things, which uh, public works will be able to take care of. One thing that we noticed, the, uh, the playground equipment is close to 20 years old. They're holding up relatively well and need a bit of a touch up on the paint. But like last year, we had a couple of Couple of vets and my damage to and Things are so old, they don't make the parts anymore, so our public works guys had to fabricate something. So I'm not saying this year or next year, but probably somewhere down the line, if we want to keep the parts that we may have to start thinking about placing things. Okay. I mean, a lot of looks great right now, but it, it's pushing 20 years old, so good time. To, that's all I have. Thank you, Joe. Uh, public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We bust the, uh, the public work, the, bust the concrete in the front of the police station, remove and grilling at the police station, turn the water on at the park, smudge, spray weeds, butthole to repair, clean up trash from street, clean up Painted at Washington Avenue, we get street lights in Washington Avenue, put up a scoreboard at Chartier Park, cut grass in the island, etc., etc., etc. As the maintenance that public work does, it shows. So I have a long list here, but it shows on the eye of everybody how we maintain Bridgeville. I believe we're doing a good job of public work doing a heck of a good job as a small group we yeah. have. They, they really work hard and, and it shows their, their work to be done properly. And that's all that, Jim. Thank you very much, Nina. Uh, public safety, Mr. Anderson. I'll defer to the Chief's report, but I have nothing further to add. Okay. Um, Mayor's report, Madam Coton. Mr. President, thank you. <clears throat> We had some complaints about the women's club being torn down. The pastor came to the borough. We met with our borough manager, and he said the building inspector told him that the building should be torn down because of asbestos. So they're going to create a parking lot there, and they think that, that that will be beneficial for them. It will take some of the cars off. Of to the avenue, they hope that that will make the residents feel better about not parking in front of their homes. I was contacted by Jeff Krauss, from his regional marketing director for Fresh Time, which is opening up at Great Southern Shopping Center on June 12th. They invited me to be part of their grand opening ceremony at 3.30 p.m. And he stated that he had spoken with our borough manager in regard to doing something for our Bridgeville on the Avenue Day and that he hopes to do some other partnering, partnering with us. Um, we also have a flyer from the Methodist Church. They have programs that will be going on until October in regard to Listening for the Future, a series of panel discussions about the issues in our world that need to be heard in order to move towards the future. Stories about 
opioids in mental health, and this month on the 19th, they have a lesbian gay uh, panel discussion to be held. I'll see that, that the other programs are put on our both site so that you will be able to attend. They all will start at 7 p.m. And I have a letter from the Bridgeville Community Food Bank addressed to the Bridgeville Police Department Chief Chad King. I, the volunteers, and especially the recipient families of the Bridgeville Community Food Bank are thankful and blessed from the generosity of our local police departments. Your multi-jurisdictional food drive was amazing. Our pantry shelves are overstocked and we needed to find a few other places in Bethany to store all the food that was collected. Wow! Many thanks to all the officers who made this food drive such a success. Original Community Food Bank is an all-volunteer mission to the needy families within the Chartiers Valley and South Fayette School Districts. We operate with the donations that come in. During our March 17th distribution, we assisted 180 families. Have peace, Tim Anderson, coordinator of the Bridgeville Community Food Bank. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'd like to interrupt. The, it was really cool that the VA asked you to throw a pitch, and you threw uh, threw the pitch better than quite a few other celebrities. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty nice simple like that. Uh, Police Chief Chad King. Thank you, Council President. Just a few quick things. Um, we have the Memorial Day parade coming up, so probably about a week in advance, or at least four or five days in advance, we'll be passing out the obligatory no parking restriction flyers for the parade route and uh, for the staging routes also on the side streets. Um, we have the Click It or Ticket campaign starts later this month, carries into June, so make sure you obey traffic laws and, of course, wear your seatbelts. And last but not least, I uh, talked to John Carney from Traffic Systems today, and hopefully sometime this month we're going to get the mast arm replaced at Washington Station Street, the one between Grace down there and held up the cables. It was supposed to be delivered today, but the truck was MIA, so we don't know where it's at. Did you explain the drawing that you had? I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it, thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, solicitor, Tom? Uh, I have nothing to add to my report. All right. Uh, engineer, do you have nothing to add to my report? Do you have any questions? Fire Chief, Will Chilean. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, you guys have my report for last month. Um, again, we've been very busy in the service. Also, we'd like to thank everybody that came for the cash bash. A couple weeks ago, we had a good time. I think everybody there had a good time. It was a nice night. Again, thanks for the support for everything. And again, like the Chief said, we've got Memorial Day coming up. Uh, historical Society. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'd be here if I, if I could, and I let you in, and I'm here. Good. Uh, bake sale. We had a bake sale on Thursday and Friday. Uh, if you missed it, which I think most of you might have, we are still taking donations to help compensate the fact of all the things that we're doing, like paying off our... Have you been over to see our new railings? You all need to come over. They're double-deckers. There's one my height and then one for all the people. So please come over, walk it, check it out. Um, it was a wonderful thing to have done. We'd only been trying for 30 years. Also, I want to invite you to the last Tuesday night of the month. And I forgot to check the calendar on this one. It'll be down at the fire hall at 7.30, and it is the early, early history of Upper St. Clair Township. And then the second Tuesday of June, 7 o'clock, over at the railroad station, you're all invited. Um, we're going to talk about George Washington losing the Battle of Fort Necessity in 1755. Um, also, um, we will be in Community Day. I 
just haven't gotten the check over and that we are participating. However, I'm going to a big family wedding that weekend and I'll be gone for seven days. They're having too many parties. Anyway, um, seriously, here I come. If you could really hammer away slowly, gently, constantly, and not, to do a four or eight lane highway going from Upper St. Clair straight across to I-79 on the new highway, then Bob wouldn't have to worry so much about what's going on on Route 519. It is a worry. But I object to certain things, and when I'm coming up Station Street Hill in the left lane, and the car across the street is going to come and pass me by, the car right behind him couldn't wait, and he came around him, and, he, and I'm tired of seeing them also go through red light. I wish we had the money for policemen to stand up there and write tickets. But I take money, I know that. Uh, the other thing is the speeding. I know it's everywhere, but it's getting worse. There again, if we could afford more policemen, we could do something about some of that. And I think citizens would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Over here from the library. Planning. Borough manager, what do you call them? I have the library report if you have any questions. And just a note that um, community day is June 16th from 11 to 6. Um, our office sent out uh, approximately 186 uh, letters requesting donations, and they've been coming in very steadily, so we're really happy about that. And the committee has been working very hard to get everything together. So um, the banners and the uh, signs are both soon. And hopefully, we'll see everybody there. Right. Uh, old business. New business? I don't know. Do we adjourn? Second it? I'll second it. No? All in favor? Thank you, everybody. Next. That's what I mean.